so it was season three of Heroes. Um, Ando breaks out. I, I, I was my, I mean, Ando really kind of gets his, uh, gets his powers. He's, how do you view your character? Yeah, he, he got his mojo. Yeah. Definitely in, yeah. in season three. It was fun. Um, uh, I liked the first episode where they kind of flash forward into the alternate future, and that's when you first got the glimpse that he may have some kind of ability in the future. And, um, and it was a nice way to sort of work up to that, and then seeing him inject himself with the formula and, and acquiring the ability. So uh, it definitely was a fun season looking back. And um, there was a whole running theme about you know who's now the leader, who is the sidekick, and then uh, towards the end of the season we said, well, let's become sort of partners. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So. Yeah, uh, it, it definitely was uh, uh, a lot of stuff to process. Was that, now for you as an actor, was that, uh, I mean, because this kind of gives you a whole other palette, I would imagine, to work with now you're uh, dealing with this whole thing. That's not even a, a real thing or a power. So, I mean, as, yeah. as an actor, was it a challenge or was it something you needed to get your, your hooks into? Um, I just knew that he was blasting some kind of, like, laser light, mm -hmm. uh, whatever, out of his hands. And so I just kind of thought about it and, um, you know, I grew up reading like Dragon Ball and uh, like Street Fighter. Okay, right. um, so that's where that kind of whole handle blast came. And, right. um, it's funny because they always added in later in post, you know. So, um, so when you actually see, uh, you know, that's 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 the first time I see it, like yeah. you know, yeah. when it's aired. So, um, but it's good. I'm glad I got the powers later because I feel like he got flushed out as a human mm -hmm. in the first, you know, in the mm -hmm. first two seasons. Right. Um, and I guess he's always kind of been this everyman character. He started out as this everyman. I think right. that's mentioned in the first uh, season. Um, did you when, you, when you first got the role, was it, um, was there any kind of uh, difference between the way you had to treat your character? Like, was it spelled out from the uh, directors? Because, I mean, you're basically the everyman in a character yeah. around super, in a cast of superheroes. So right. Was there any direction uh, that way in how you had to treat the character? Uh, I'm not sure how much of it was spelled out, per se. Um, you know, I think when we first started the show, it was all kind of like, let's just kind of go with whatever's happening and see what happens, you know, mm -hmm. and no one had an exact idea how it was going to play out, and I wasn't sure how much Ando was going to be part of the show, you know, um, but it seemed like they were on this adventure together, and he sort of became the voice of reason, I guess, in that pairing, and I feel like he represented the audience members a lot because, you know, it would just be like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. this is not real, you know, and... Um, and then seeing him sort of transform and, and really adapt to kind of the whole situation and what was happening. So, right. yeah, I feel like uh, if you look back, he sort of got through the, or the most amount of change, you know, going from a sort of an everyday uh, human being to, you know, experiencing all these supernatural stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's, uh, I mean, you know, you're an American guy of Korean descent. There's what, a lot of com complexities there. Yeah, yeah. So what's uh, I mean, what was it a challenge for you to play? I mean, obviously, I don't think you knew Japanese. Uh, yeah, I, I I knew a little bit of it because uh, uh -huh. I studied a semester in college. Uh, okay. But definitely, the show um, really helped me to study in a whole new level. You know, and, and luckily, I had a coach from NBC, and um, it's been fun. You know, uh, I I think it's part of the fun part of being an actor is being able to acquire new skills and try different kind of roles. You know. And, so I think each season I've gotten better, uh, but it's a, it's a hard language. Um, mm. You know, in fact, uh, when I do rehearsals at home, I'll rehearse my scenes in English and then in Korean and then in Japanese, you know, just kind of like throwing all these things in my album and stuff. Uh, and it's always fun, like, you can watch back and you're like, it almost doesn't feel like I'm watching myself, you know, it feels like it's so much play. Right, yeah. right. That's really interesting to me, so, I mean, because so you rehearse in English first and then and then in Korean, which you're comfortable with. And I didn't, yeah. Now, how does the performance change over those? And then, because once you get the Japanese, you're actually, this is yeah. like, you do it for the camera. I, I, I think whenever you do something in a foreign language, it connect, connects into a different part of your brain. So right. um, I think that alone adds a, a sort of an interesting angle. Yeah. Um, and then with our characters, I feel like, uh, especially for the American audience, we had to add some physicality mm. that normally wouldn't really go with other type of settings, but uh, because the uniqueness of our story, I think it just 
kind of works, you know, so so we can become more animated or uh, there were there were a lot of comic book like moments sure. that I think that only worked in sort of our context. Okay, okay. Um, what uh, what are we gonna see uh, from Ando next season? Uh, so this volume is called Redemption, and all the characters are basically trying to continue with their lives again. Um, we're back in Japan, trying to revive the company that Hero's Father left us, and uh, we're starting up a new business, uh, and it's gonna sort of push us into some really odd types of adventures. And um, he's gonna be, um, you know, linked with someone that you kind of didn't expect. So mm -hmm. that'd be a nice surprise for. Um, do, you, do, you, uh, do you think, uh, how would you, I guess if, if last season was, was kind of, was there a theme to this coming season, if last season was, you know, you getting your, uh, it was pretty, it was a pretty dark uh, tone yeah, to it, it was yeah. this next season, really with the right. redemption, it was. Right, because uh, we're fugitives, we're sort of on the run from the government, they're trying right. to gather up, you know, these people's special abilities, luckily, that's been resolved, but now, um, you know, we have this new carnival theme, setting that's being incorporated into the show and it's this idea of you know if you went to circus and you see the, the flame eaters and the knife throwers and um, the acrobats and you're like Gosh, these people almost seem superhuman right. uh, well what if they were and the circus was just a facade you know? uh -huh. and now uh, they're slowly being revealed after being immersed in our society mm -hmm. quite some time so um, there's going to be some new characters that will be I guess being becoming tangled with Robert Nepper, who played T back when 24, okay. he's playing the new ringleader, and we have some other uh, faces that you'll recognize throughout the season. Okay. They're like, oh man, 